final piece for the... No, it's a mouse slip! He mouse slipped! Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Are you choking? I mean, W. Danton doesn't even want to take... Look at him, he's like, what should I do? Forever, for history. Oh! Oh my god! There is no way! Fabiano and smiling. This is immortality stuff. Here today, we just see a nine round Swiss. 10 minutes of starting time, two seconds added with every move played. That increment is super important for some of our participants who may not be so good with their mouse skills. And we have 69 people advancing to division placement, 30 through 69 in the third division, 12 through 29 in the second division, and first through 11, they get a chance to play for division one. It's open to all grandmasters and those who have qualified this is the fourth leg of four. It is the final chance for all the players vying to make the season end finals. And as you see here, this has been your 2024. His king is getting checkmated. Rook F2 is mate. So he went knight E4. I thought he was just playing cheapo chess, but what he was trying to do was save his king. And then he took on B6 here. So for Levon, this king has G4, and that's the only escape. So. H5 is tempting, but I am a bit worried about this pawn going forward. So you're very close to a checkmate. So trying to make that work, rook e2, b7, I think you're actually going to get the white king because in this position, black does have the move h5, and then g5 is a checkmate threat, e5 is a checkmate threat, bishop to d6 is checkmate. So he finds rook e2. Why is there no brilliant move there? I'm giving it to him. Rook e2 was such a good find from Levon. These are the type of positions where mere mortals, we just get worried that there's a pawn going the other side, we get passive. But what Levon has just done, oh, set up h5 checkmate in this position. Go get your queen. Have it, enjoy it for the one turn that it's actually appearing because h5 ends the game on the spot. A check here. Oh, he's playing for a win. I love that. When his opponent has no time, he's playing for the win. But queen d6, e8 equals queen. That doesn't lose for black because he would take, but now, what's the move here? One second for queen e5 was not it. So Fabi is playing against his opponent's time trouble. He's played enough title Tuesdays to know how to score victories from positions that are quite messy. Queen d1, maybe the white rook will just chase this queen around. Where can this queen go? Is there a safe square? He goes to c4 because the knight has d7 covered. He goes to c6, still covering the d7 square. So white doesn't have an easy move at h5. I love moves like that. Securing the g4 square. And now he goes with the a pawn. He's just saying, I have all the time in the world. You've done nothing to, uh, to hurt me and hurt my chances. d7 is a threat, I think it was. Because after queen takes d7, there was rook takes h5. So now we're giving checks. Fabi, he allowed d7 and d7 missed. But d7 was a tactical opportunity there. I wish I had time to show every single tactic available in the position, but d7 miss, and now rook takes h5? That doesn't actually make a draw. The knight takes, the queen takes, the king slides the g8. He's going for mate on g7. That's a direct threat. Queen c1 check. He should give a bunch of checks, but the king <gasps> it escapes h3, and now black's losing. So rook g8, rook takes h5. You actually smothered your own king. Fabiano Caruana because queen takes f5. His opponent more or less had that pre-moved and Fabi loses this game. What a game that was. And now he is just going for, ooh, he gave away a rook for a pawn. He just wants to go after this black king. There is an opportunity to make a mistake. So if you're not careful, if you're not precise, he's gonna go 96 check. Um, actually, wait, white's up a knight. So what was just captured on g7 was a bishop? No, it was a pawn. So white's been up a ton of material. And what black is trying to do is create some sort of counter chance. But rook b1 is a single check. The king slides to d2. And these rooks together are way too powerful against the open black king. This is game over. Jose Martinez gets it done. There's got to be a check there, right? Check here. Queen d5 check. That might be simplest. And that's what Jose plays. That's game over. That's a win for Jospam. Where does this king go? Levon is thinking, he brings it forward. This has been an awesome game. There is no checkmate. There's not even a single check. All of these squares are covered thanks to this knight on c6 and the rook on c3. a6 is the move in the position. It makes a lot of sense given Levon's last few turns that he would go for this, but perhaps he has another alternative that keeps his king safer. Levon not worried. Oh, 97. Nice find. A pin, a fork, and that is a dagger. Game over. Levon Aronian wins. 
that move, urgh, can't get away with it. Your knight is pinned. So great job from Levon. Let's go on over to, uh, we have in this game, Ferosev. Sorry, I was just trying to count the material. Ferosev's up two pawns and they're passed. So against the Uzbek Vakidov, who has been such a, an important member of Team Uzbekistan, helping them win gold and now bronze in 2024 in the Olympiad. Unfortunately, Fedoseyev, he is just in better shape. He beat Magnus Carlsen with black. He's not afraid of anybody in these big moments. And here comes the B-pawn. You take a knight. This rook trade could have been offered. And also just B2 and then B1. So stepping out of a check, rook takes D5 would have been check if you took. Now rook takes A1 is a free bishop. That is game over. Fedoseyev gets it done. This is the position. Look at how crazy this was. Bishop takes F3. He thought that he was promoting... This is Lenier Dominguez with precision, taking the queen, black is slightly better, but check on c3, not taking the queen. This is one of my moves of the day. I'm saying it early, but to play bishop c3 check in that position, whoo, -hoo -hoo, that is some lovely stuff. White has only one legal move, and then he gave a check on h1, and then a check on h2, and that's what Lenier Dominguez does. Uh, he is just so accurate in his calculation, and he is a phenomenally strong player. The Black King would not have been able to successfully escape. And now Bishop E7 is found by Wesley. E5, E4 is checkmate. So King to G8, check. King to H7, what's the idea there? Bishop F8 only move, wow. But I guess it doesn't change anything. So Bishop F8 is findable if you recognize that this Bishop is under attack and he finds it. Wesley so is so accurate in these moments. And E5, E4 checkmate. Here it comes. That's just checkmate. Mate in one. Wesley so gets the job done. Pantsulaya. Is d7 just winning? Check here. Check back. King can wrap itself around. I do think that white is simply winning here. So just a couple turns away from a win for Hans to get to four out of five. And where is it? King e2. So Hmm. D7, check. King F5, you keep checking. So rook E5, it allows the white king to run back around this way. King D5 played. With the rooks coming off, white should now have an easy win because if black has to sacrifice the rook for the D-pawn, white can then sacrifice the rook for the H-pawn, and then the white king is going to scoop up the queen side. So this is easy at this point, and Svante might just resign. He has no chance, and there it is, a win for Hans Niemann. Should be winning, but not very straightforward when you're worried about your king's safety. And Hans, he is doing well on the clock, but right now on the board is where it's winning for Nicholas Theodoru, and he just needs to find a couple accurate decisions, and he does start with the right move, b7, h3. I guess you can just queen, because h2, king h1, and the... Knight on e3, it's a very powerful piece. I didn't expect this to be the way white can try and win, but black, Hans, he's doing a good job here. a7 should still do it. Rook takes and queen, and if h3 threatening a check on b1, white can promote to a queen and stop that, and there's a second pawn that will promote. So two pawns in the seventh is too much. You know, two rooks in the seventh, you probably have to resign. But two pawns in the seventh? No. Oh, this is just brutal. E takes, threatens F7 check. You don't even need three queens. You might just deliver checkmate in a few turns. So Min Lei, he is going to be alone at the top. We know how strong Min is, but it's not every day that he can start with such a Fantastic score. Six and a half out of seven. I think Levon might just resign here. I don't see what he does. He takes, but queen takes check. Knight f7 actually wins and is played. Because after queen takes, queen c1, you just drop your bishop back to f1. And you're up an entire minor piece. Min Lei wins. We tune in the exact right moment. Knight takes g2. Double exclaim, not taking a rook on e4, that could have been captured, but instead knight takes g2, and if you take with the king, queen takes h3, the king steps back, rook e6, rook g6, oh, this is just over, this is 
checkmate. I don't see how... I, I don't know what Han just walked into, but as soon as I pull up the game, sacrifice, check, rook lift, checkmate. All of the moves come with a purpose from the black side. So uh, Jaime Santos here is just... It's just over for, for Hans. Okay, you can take this at any moment. Give this check here. Here it comes. And this is how the game is going to end. Knight g3 and bishop c5, I think. Takes, takes, bishop c5. And then white has to play knight to d4 because you're in checkmate otherwise. So bishop c5 might be better first. You don't have to even sacrifice pieces. But I was thinking of checks first. But for Jaime, who has the responsibility of playing... His moves, he cannot take them back if he makes a mistake. I can, on the other hand. He goes for bishop c5 first. Bishop e3 tries to close the diagonal, but after takes, takes, you then lose this knight on g3, and you get checkmated in a couple turns. Jaime Santos wins by resignation. Gave up his bishop on c5 with check to distract the rook from sacrificing itself from here. And then after takes, f takes e6. I mean, Levon is on fire. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it's, it's mate. Queen f7 is checkmate. e7 check against Basiaucic. So, king to c3 played by Wesley. Bishop to c1. Sad little pony on f1. And now I think this is the optimal choice. The knight for the dark square bishop trade is winning for black. Bishop takes f1, takes g2. You see all the pawns are falling. Black will be up at minimum one pawn and likely more because b3 will not last for too much longer. So Wesley is super precise. I expected it. I mean, Minlay has had no chance ever since he played d5, which was a mistake. It's been the Wesley so show. And for Wesley, he's going to go to seven and eight and he will be in first place. He was a clear second. Now he's going to clear Minlay and Minlay's in that danger zone. He had the white pieces in this game. That means he's likely to get black in the final round. Will he face somebody who is going to be quite peaceful-minded and just make a draw? Could be mutually beneficial. But for Min, you see what Wesley did. Wesley had the black pieces and still played for more. And the mistake for Min actually happened on move 30. So, you know, oftentimes you hear in these tournaments, no draw offers until move 30. So they make it to move 30 and they make a draw offer. Min's mistake came on the 30th move, but it wasn't an easy position even if objectively it was okay. This is not okay. This is complete domination of bishops over knights. F4 shuts the door on G3 for the knight. This knight is actually permanently trapped. You can go to H2. You can't get elsewhere. This knight is not participating in this game and black's plan. Thank you very much for this pawn on B3. I do not mind if I snack on that. And then after that, the A pawn becomes a queen. So the bishop... Three squares away from knight. I know you're tired of hearing me say it, but look at the bishop dominate the knight. There's just nothing that knight has been able to do. Nothing. Take it. Now it's time. Res resignation as soon as the pawn falls. You can look at Min. He's like... He's, he is making this game interesting. Before, I thought it was just done. But now, the way he's been playing, it's creating some issues for Fedoseyev. I do think he can push this pawn... But he essentially wants to get his rook to c2 at the right moment because all trades lead to winning king and pawn in games. f2, g3, h4, they fall like dominoes. And aha, king e4. He wants rook c6 to c2. He's doing exactly that. He couldn't do it with the king on f3, so he brings the king back first. Now check. Now down. Once the rook takes and the king takes back down here, the king is too far away. King f3, take, take, take. Pac-Man style. Vladimir Fedoseyev, he is winning this game. As Wesley says, time ticks down to zeros. Vladimir Fedoseyev has taken, and look at that, double fist pump. You know, he, it's a modest celebration, but you can tell that game meant something to him. So Fedoseyev, he almost led Slovenia uh, to medals in the Olympia. That was shocking. Nobody expected him to be up there. But he does get the job done individually as Fedoseyev officially wins the play. And you see his face there.